So yes, hello everyone. My name is Maximilian Meyer, and I'm here on behalf of my team to present you our solution to the acoustic brain stronger task. So a little bit of introduction first. Uh, we are Team DBIS, which stands for the Research Group on Databases and Information Systems from the University of Innsbruck in Austria. And a little side note, if you're interested into our solution in detail and want to have a look at it or want to try reproducing our results, then you can find all our code on GitHub. There's also a few data files uh, linked in the readme, so you can download them and basically start reproducing within 10 minutes or so. Okay, so uh, what we did first when we got all the data, and like mentioned in the overview talk, it was a huge amount of data. So our first step was to try to reduce the number of data by reducing the number of features, because we weren't first sure if we even had the hardware capabilities to handle all the data. So we had two attempts at feature reduction. The first attempt was just manually looking at the features and dropping some of them. So we decided to skip all features in vector format because that was just a lot of numbers. And we decided for all scalar features that we only are going to use means and variances because yeah, uh, we verified that that on a very small reduced data set that that more or less performs the same as using all features. And then we tried to reduce the number of features further by applying recursive feature elimination with uh, random forest classifier to rank feature importance. But actually it turned out that that made classification performance worse. So we stuck with our first attempt and used that throughout both subtasks. And what we also did then was we scaled numerical features to the range of 0 to 1 and we encoded categorical features using one order encoding. Okay, for subtask one, our approach was we wanted to exploit the hierarchical nature of the short taxonomies we got. So we, we had a natural hierarchy in genres and subgenres. So we wanted to use that and decided to train a hierarchical set of classifiers for that. So what we did was actually we trained one classifier that predicted main genres. And then for every main genre, we trained a further classifier to predict its subgenres. And to do prediction, then we first run the main genre classifier, and then run all subgenre classifiers for the main genres that were identified in the step before. And also, as a last step, we had a fallback option because of the multi label nature of the problem. It was possible because the way we implemented it using the one versus all scheme, that there could be songs that did not have any classes predicted. So, we had to introduce a fallback and we chose to just assign the most popular subgenre in case we didn't assign anything else before. Uh, we also tried to actually train a normal single label classifier here to assign a fallback, but that didn't work as good as just using the most popular, which was rock for most data sets. Okay, so um, the approach mentioned before is of course independent of concrete classification algorithm. So what we decided was actually we created reduced data sets with 10, 50 and 100k songs and then tested different classification algorithms on them to see <coughs> which ones worked best. So we tried random forests, forests of extremely randomized trees, support vector machines, uh, multi-layer perceptrons and extreme gradient boosting. And we did a cross grained grid search for all of them using cross validation on those three reduced data sets. And what we found that actually multi-layer perceptrons and extreme gradient boosting worked very well, but it was too slow for our hardware resources. So even training a model for it on our 50k data set took like hours and we judged that it wasn't possible to train full scale model on all of the about two million songs we had for them. We sadly didn't have a supercomputer at our disposal. So at the end we decided to stick with extra trees and SVMs in different combinations depending on the run. So we always used an SVM for the main genre classifier and depending on run we used either extra trees or also SVMs for subgenres. And it turned out what worked best was using SVMs for both. And we used the SVM implementation provided in scikit-learn, which is actually a wrapper around liblinear. 
uh, with the C penalty parameter set to 10 and um, class break balancing turned on. And yeah, you can see our, the result of our best run visualized here. So yeah, I can't really judge how good that is. Yeah, uh, what's apparent is, of course, it's logical. Uh, predicting genre is much easier than subgenre, of course. And what's also apparent is the, the per track metrics performed better than the per label metrics. So for the second subtask, we decided to utilize voting to combine the four datasets together. So we trained main genre classifier again separately on the four datasets provided. And we then, when we wanted to predict main genre for, for a given song, we predicted it with all four classifiers. And then we utilized the mapping from genre hierarchies from all four datasets to the one we are currently looking at for test set. And we did that with a very simple way. We just calculated the Levenstein string distance measure and mapped together all genres that had a distance of at most one. So that allows us to basically ignore some orthographic differences, like, for example, hip hop being written with a space in between or not. But it doesn't really give us much matching. And then we simply counted the number of classifiers that predicted a given genre. Uh, divided that by the number of classifiers that produced at least one label that was mappable, so all classifiers that produced nothing that we could use for a given song were discarded. And then we used two different variants for deciding if we retain a genre. The first was simply requiring at least 50% of the classifiers producing that genre. And the first variant was requiring 60% but counting the vote of the classifier trained on the same dataset as the test set twice. So it basically has two votes. Results of that, variant two worked better than variant one. So 60% but double votes worked better. And compared to subtask two, we can see, uh, subtask one, sorry, we can see that we did better in some metrics, but we did significantly worse in others. So we have a visualization here showing the best runs for subtask one and subtask two compared to each other on Tactile. So for example, per, per track genre, we did better, quite better. But for example, for per label subgenre, we did significantly worse. So our conclusion from that is that, well, first, we would have liked to use multi-layer perceptrons or extreme rate abusing because they would probably have done better. But we actually started to work on the task too late, only about four weeks before the submission deadline. So we just didn't have the time for that. And the voting approach we used for subtask 2 does not seem to work at all, so it doesn't seem to be the way to go. And also maybe we could have used a better feature selection process, because that could have improved results. Okay, that's it.